this is, uh, I don't know if you have the article up there, if you scan through it. I do. Okay. So I think what we'll do is, I don't want to read my article. What I'm going to do is I'm going to list one of his reasons, and then we'll talk about it. And okay. We'll, or we'll just see where it goes. So this is an article that I wrote, which I'm not going to read. I'm just going to use as a guide. A call to ban porn or how left-right neo-Puritanism is more alike than different. So there's this dude, Matt Walsh, and he's a very well-known Christian conservative writer. And he, he writes a lot of polemic-styled stuff. He's, he's all fire and vim and vigor. And he used to write, I, I don't know if he still writes for The Blaze, but right now this is, this is in the site, The Daily Wire. So I don't know if he... You know, a lot of people write for multiple sites, so I'm not sure. He started off writing his own blog called Matt Walsh Blog, was pretty well known for it, and then the Blaze paid him a lot of money to become the writer on their blog. And he's I, I want to point all this out because this is a highly respected member of the conservative community, considered one of the thought leaders. I think it's important to note that. It's not like I'm picking someone here, some fringe person, some person that nobody reads and trying to hold that person up as somehow potentially representing Christian conservative, social conservative thought. So he writes this article about why it is that porn should be outlawed. Are you triggered already? No, I don't let stupid stuff get to me like that. Oh, that's too bad. So the, the, the first point is porn is prostitution. And he says, prostitution is illegal in every state save one. Yet pornography is legal in every state. And then he goes through this lengthy diatribe. So, so proving the appeal, that porn is the, so this logical fallacy is appeal to legality and illegality. Yeah. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Prostitution is an economic transaction. Uh, I, I know that these anti-business communists out there want to just squash every last remnant of of uh, capitalism. But, yeah, go away. I, I don't personally think prostitution is a great idea. I don't think promiscuity is a great idea. I'm not for it personally. Uh but I will say that criminalizing prostitution makes it more dangerous. <laughs> much more uh, dangerous. Mu so much as more a dangerous. As a conservative, because, because the whole point of conservatism is to ensure all the stupid stuff that has been going on for a long time continues. They, could, they conserve idiotic policies. Uh, when it comes to like the, the welfare state, the, the liberal Democrats come up with the welfare programs and then the conservative Republicans conserve those idiotic welfare programs. And there's not a conservative or Republican out there that hasn't met a, a socialistic democratic welfare program that they didn't believe that they could run efficiently. Oh, Larry said drug deals are economic transactions as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes, they are. Exactly. Thank you, Larry. Yep, absolutely. You're, you're, Thank you. You're not. You're on your you're way. Only half the moron I thought you were. I know. You're. 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 You're well on your way there. Uh, so yeah, that that hey, was Larry. That, Larry, I I got a request for you. Can can you like the post? The for the for the show. Can you just put a like on there? Because I noticed that you didn't drop a like on there. Oh, that's terrible, Larry. Why wouldn't you do that? You're my bro, man. Why wouldn't you do that? Larry do is that. Larry is my token horrible person. Everybody has a horrible to a token horrible person. Larry's mine. Everybody say hi to Larry. So I yeah. I would feel better if Larry threw a like on this post because he's he's in here Schumer talking a bunch of stuff. And I don't think it I, I think a like is a proper price of admission for him. I think so. I mean, we're giving you entertainment, Larry. We're giving you rage fits that you can act on. So the least you can do is give us a like. So, so the, 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 that, that was exactly my argument. This is the but it's against the law argument. So basically, it's, it's this. It should be illegal because it's illegal. Is that a circular, isn't that circular logic when you prove something 
with the very thing that you're trying to prove? Yes. I think yes, so. Yes, it's, it's, it's circle jerk logic. It's circular firing squad logic. Right. So let's get to the second point. Porn feeds the sef- sex trafficking industry. There is little sense in trying Porn to Porn feeds consumer demand. <laughs> right. There is little sense in trying to fight sex trafficking while at the same time defending pornography. I don't know why he does that little ography thing as a sacred right. I don't know who's calling it sacred. The link between the two is unmistakable and should be self-evident to any thinking person. Sex traffickers routinely, oh, pardon me, reforce their slaves into pornography. And what, what, what are you Prohibi- saying in that argument? Prohibition feeds sex trafficking. Because it is prohibited, that is created an illicit market. Just like, just like the prohibition of drugs creates an illicit market, which incentivizes violence to maintain existing turf and to use violence to expand into new turf. Well... Yeah, and it's, to me, this is the, but this action leads to another action that leads to another action that leads to a bad action argument. And and you know who makes those kind of arguments to try to prohibit you from doing things? Put status progressives. That's, yes. That's, that's the exact argument that they're using, actually, when it, when it comes to guns. So if you oppose gun control because it penalizes everything, one, for the actions of a few, then and you should feel the same way about porn unless you're insane enough to believe that most porn is the fruit of sex trafficking. And that's absolutely, that's not even close to being true. It's it's more true to say that sex traffickers may more often than not force their victims into porn than it is to say that most porn is done by sex traffickers. That's simply not true. So you want to penalize the many for the criminal actions of the few. That, to me, sounds like progressive statism, doesn't it? Or statist progressivism, whatever. However, yes. however, however you want to look at that. <clears throat> It's the same exact logic. Am I missing something? No, you're, you're not missing anything at all. You are 100% correct in your assertions. So we we'll get to the third one. Porn destroys children. An American child is first introduced to hardcore internet porn, porn at the age of 11 on average. That's the argument. Gonna let that. What? what Got to have a thought on that. I I'm a pretty creative guy, but I I don't even know what the hell he's talking about. Well, what he's saying is that there's something going on that if children are exposed to it, it could hurt them. Therefore, we should shut it down, like children being exposed to violent video games. Or yeah. vulgar I'm movies. Strange, strangely enough, that age or is roughly this, that's roughly the age that sex ed is taught in the public schools these days. I think they do it in like fifth or sixth grade, something like that. Or at least they did way back when. I wonder if he has a problem at all with the indoctrination process that children go through right from the beginning where they're 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 not forced but they're kind of it's presented in a way that everybody does it. That's the, the you know the pledge of allegiance at the beginning of the day. What kind of damage does that do to a child that conditions them to to start to believe unquestionably unquestioningly in authority? What what does that do to cut off their their potential human growth? Probably more than seeing porn when they're 11. Don't get me wrong. I'm not for children seeing porn when they're 11. Just 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 to make that clear. But again, to me this reveal, reveals again what a true progressive this Matt Walsh dude is. Because like yes. them, he wants to prohibit 
anything from everyone that might have an effect on someone, a bad effect, a negative effect on someone. And look, if it, if it saves one child, why not just ban all porn and guns? Ban all porn, ban all guns, children getting a hold of alcohol, dangerous, ban alcohol, uh, ban, bat, you know, violent video games, ban uh, R-rated movies. I'm, cars have hurt children. If a child escape, you know, if that child gets behind the wheel and it has happened, a child's gotten behind the wheel and driven it and injured themselves, well, then we should ban all cars because children might hurt themselves. Where does it stop? Where is that line where you decide, okay, this is the percentage that we're looking for. This is the percentage of children that are affected by this, and at this magic percentage number, that's when the prohibition kicks in where we prevent everyone from being able to do this. Well, children can't get hurt if you ban children. That's true. That is that is absolutely excellent. And uh, Ty says, I see porn. I see... I, I saw porn when I was young by accident. Hide your porn well. Dude, they didn't have the interwebs when I was a, well, yeah, when I was a kid. I'm just going to tell you that I, I found porn when I was 11. Yeah. And I found some, I don't know. Yeah, it's easier to find it with the interwebs, but I found it. And I found some hardcore stuff. I'm not going to say how hardcore, but it was. Some of it was disturbing. I'm not saying it's good for kids to see porn. It's not. I do not approve. I do not condone it. But what this guy wants to do, he, he basically wants to do what progressives want to do. He wants to prevent you. He wants to protect you. Matt Walsh is the Lord protector of all who will determine what is safe and what is not safe, and he will 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 protect you from ever having to confront it. Everything is going to be sanitized, clean, and safe for you. So you don't have to worry about bad things happening to you. Well, that sounds like steady progressivism. That's, that's, that's what they try to do. They Thank try you to, for your service, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> they try to enact all of these preventative laws that prevent you from harming yourself or harming others. That's what they do. Rather than address the crime when the, an actual crime takes place, where an individual harms another individual, they want to enact laws that somehow will prevent you from committing the crime in the first place. And, and, and again, oh, go the, here, here, here we go. Here's the next one. Are you ready? This okay. one really made blood shoot out of my eyes. I'll see how you handle this. Porn makes you less free. There is nothing freeing about porn. A quote, free society, unquote, is not one that must or should feature easily accessed pornography. Porn kills freedom because it enslaves the viewer to his passions. What do you got well, to say about not, that, Lou? Huh? I think he's you, got you. Shut you down. He, he, he does. He does. I have to admit that nobody is free until they are restricted. <laughs> That's. Yeah. Yeah, ab ab absolutely. Nobody, nobody is free until they are limited in what they are able to do. Nobody is free until they have somebody that tells them what is appropriate for them, what they may be permitted to do, and how, the, how they will be punished if they are disobedient. And by the way, those who tell them what they can and cannot do and those who meet out the punishment for disobedience are called servants because they serve you. What were you, wasn't it you? I think it was you. Weren't you telling me before the show, where did social conservatism have its root in America? I don't mean, when I mean social conservative, I'm, I'm actually a social conservative mm. for myself, well, not what, for what others. Okay, what is considered the modern social conservatism, uh, being opposed to homosexuality and, and all this so-called sexual degeneracy and everything else and being uptight, in the um, early 20th century, that was the plot of the leftist progressives. So 
in, in particularly the the ones in Europe and outside of the U.S. were were very strong on that. Uh, as an example, down in Cuba, homosexuals were put into camps and executed for being homosexuals by the by the loving left progressives. Uh, also in the Soviet Union, different forms of uh, sexual degeneracy to include homosexuality was grounds for extermination. The Fabian socialists were quite famous for that, uh, along with their eugenics partners here in the U.S. As a matter of fact, uh, the Fabians learned about eugenics from people like Margaret Sanger and, and the ones that came before her here in the U.S., so the progressives. But ultimately, it goes back to the uh, – the the early Puritans, the ones that came over here and and first settled in the in in the what would become the colonies. So there you have it. This is just further proof that Matt Walsh is a yeah. progressive. And, and, and those early Puritans, those are those are the first ones to bring communism and religious extremism to America's shores. Yay! So and and Puritanism. This is, I mean, the title of this article. It's uh. You know, it's it's the neo uh, uh, the neo puritanicalism. It's it's left and right neo puritanicalism. It puritanism never fully left America, and it's still alive and well in both political wings of the American landscape. So my point, what I observed with this porn makes you less free diet little thing there is his, his argument is well, first of all. He's speaking freedom of slavery <laughs> or welly in there. So uh, he's speaking in vague platitudes. Uh, I, 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 I call it a sound and fury signifying nothing. You know, I'm quoting Shakespeare. I didn't come up with that phrase. If I did, you know, I, I wouldn't be doing this show with Lou. I would probably be on Fox News right now with my beautiful eloquence. But alas, this is my lot in life. So, so Matt. I can't believe I just said I'd be on Fox News like that would be a good thing. Ugh, 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 I feel dirty. So, so, so for for Matt, what he what he's imagining is that that individuals are are helpless automatons that they have no free will. That porn is is some sort of beast that that grabs at people and puts a gun to their head and says, you will watch this and you will become obsessed with this. So he's not giving any agency to individuals. That sounds like progressives to me, man. Prostate progressivism right. to me. <laughs> well, the modern, the modern conservatives are progressives. Well, yeah, that's the point of the article. <laughs> that's... That's exactly the point. I'm using his article to illustrate this point, and I picked him because, again, he's considered one of the thought leaders. I don't want to say that all conservatives think alike, just like all progressives don't think alike, but I'm just saying this is this is absolutely a dominant undertone of much of conservatism in America, and it's remarkably similar to Sadie progressivism. Porn is not a sentient being threatening the viewer with violence. It's simply a sensory invitation that the viewer can reject or or not reject. And this type of thinking, it absolutely reduces human beings to helpless, unaccountable victims. It's not their fault, dude. It's porn's fault. And it's the job of the state to protect these helpless victims who have, have no free will, no agency to decide for themselves to reject this this century invitation, which is all it is. And we'll get to our last point here. You ready for that? I'm ready. Laws matter. <laughs> <laughs> the law is a teacher. People are more likely to accept something as normal and moral if the law treats it as such. I, th I think he's now he's got you. I don't think you got to come back for that. Good luck. In order for laws to be respected, they must first be respectable. And kind of a kind of a slightly different subject, but. Uh, 
how how can how can the law how can the law be used by one as a legitimate act where for anybody else is considered a criminal act? Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so I, 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 I guess it, I guess that's my big thing. Uh, this whole appeal to authority, appeal to appeal to the the word scribble down. I. And let, let me look at this again because I, I think I think he's engaging in uh, scribbling I, idolatry here. Um, yeah, oh, this law, is absolutely. Yeah. I, I say the law. He, the law is a teacher, so he sees the law as an entity of its own. Perhaps say like I don't know, maybe a god, uh, maybe a well, yeah, maybe God a, maybe creates a man. Maybe it's a maybe the law is a rival to Jesus Christ in his eyes. I don't know, but anyway, people yeah. are likely to accept something as normal and moral if the law treats it as such. Uh, no, not really. People are more likely to treat it, to accept something as nor- as normal and moral if it's been around for a long time. But that's that's simply the I'm used to it versus it's right. Uh, people accepted segregation and slavery as normal and moral for quite a long time too. Uh, in, well, in matter of fact, so those my were the law. My point would be that I believe, I'm not saying, well, if you create a law that is, that is, that doesn't line up with what people want to do, and let's call that morality, what people want to do, and what they want to do, they'll usually consider good, and what they don't want to do, they'll usually consider bad, and they'll form a morality out of that. Uh, If you look at it like that, like I do, if you create a law that fundamentally goes against what people want to do, the law is going to be feckless. But the law doesn't create the morality. Like, they had laws that legalized slavery because a huge chunk of people, that's what they wanted to do. They found an advantage of that. And so, you know, they, they had this sense of morality. They had this... American Constitution that talked about individual rights and and so they had to reconcile the fact that they had this this belief that was part of the American identity with the fact that at the end of the day they really enjoyed the, the advantage of uh, enslaving other people and preventing the people that they brought over from eventually competing with them so they developed a whole hierarchy of of weird science and and moralities to 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 create blacks as some sort of subcategory of human so it allowed them to keep hold of this individual liberty while at the same hand denying fundamentally the individual liberty of others and it wasn't law that created the morality they created the law to give their morality comfort justification or that to impose sense. their own, or to impose their their own version of morality on others, which is what the what, which, which is, is what, what the Puritans did, yeah, and that's what but, he wants that's, to do. That's what the Puritans did. They they were absolutely bedeviled that somebody somewhere might be happy, so they really harassed the living hell out of people, I and mean, they were very horrible to the Quakers. Yeah, they <laughs> they did not like the Quakers. <laughs> That's 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 for sure. Uh, but my 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 purpose of using this article is to show folks, especially even amongst the libertarian community, there are a number of people that the kind of well, I I I'm friends with kind of left leaning libertarians, right leaning libertarians. You know, I'm non hyphenated, so I'm I'm good swimming in all kinds of camps but but i i do know a fair number of right-leaning libertarians that i would say and i understand they're looking at what the progressives are doing and they're starting to focus on the progressives and they're hating on the progressives when i say progressives i mean the statist progressives and and i understand why they're doing it but they're kind of losing track of the fact that the the right <laughs> that in some ways they're kind of gravitating back towards that statist right paradigm they're just left, as, left they're, paradigm 
Well, they're right go, in the going sense to, of they're going back to their leftist roots. Yeah, but but a right in the sense of within the statist uh, identity, the statists identify left, identify right. They're all left by my standards, but and I mean statist left. Uh, but what I'm what I'm hoping to show here is these folks are just as horrible, and I guarantee you. See, right now, you look and you see that conservatives, I'll use that term loosely, they control the House, they control the Senate, and they're starting to take back control of the judiciary, but they are nowhere close to controlling the marketplace. The progressives control the marketplace for the most part. They're nowhere close to controlling the media. The progressives almost exclusively control the media, and they're nowhere close to controlling the movies and the songs and the dances. They're nowhere close to, con to controlling the education systems. And the left, they have a lot of power in America. That's why they're exerting, the, they're exerting themselves to the degree that they are. I guarantee you, I can't guarantee you for sure, but I'm pretty close to guarantee you, that if the conservatives had the same kind of power that the left has right now, that they would be imposing on you the same type of morality codes that the left want to exert. They would have their oh, version absolutely. of hate speech. Absolutely. If they if they thought they could get away with it, well, they have their version of hate speech. They don't want people to take a knee. They don't want people to not salute the flag. Uh, they want they don't want people to not engage in uh, idolatry. Uh, so it's. So uh, Brian they, Barker uh, says there's nothing moral about seatbelt tickets. Well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And Larry said laws do matter, but it is legal. L l well, laws matter in, in, in terms of the reality of power, they matter, but they're not morality. They're just, there's something written on a piece of paper. They're a wish written on a piece of paper by a legislator that, that intends to have People enforce the letter of that list, if need be, with the hope that they will get non-governed or gov governed people to behave in the way that they would like them to behave. That's all law is. And if you're in a situation where law, that piece of paper, has actually sent somebody out with a gun to enforce it, then law matters. There's real power behind that law, and it's the individual that shows up to enforce it. That's where the real power is.